Hello to everyone. We are uh, we are now starting our uh, session called Solid State Materials, Electron Devices, and Integrated Circuits. We start uh, with uh, presentation with ID number three by Alvaro and Sertorio. So, so go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, the audience. Um, Thank you for being here. It's, um, it's a pleasure for me to, to share the following topic. Meta heuristic method for dimensionality resolution task. Uh, the authors are Alvaro Anzueto Rios, the speaker, um, and the doctor Felipe Gomez Castañeda, the professor uh, Luis Martin Flores Nava, uh, and the doctor uh, Jose Antonio Moreno Cadenas. Um, the issues. Um, uh, that will review in this presentation um, uh, are a short introduction, methodology uh, we can use in this proposal, relevant, uh, some relevant results, some conclusion, uh, and finally, uh, the references uh, that used in this presentation. At the beginning, uh, we'll explain uh, this architecture, uh, this architecture called uh, our encoder. Uh, in, this, in this part, the our encoder is, is a, a, a good configuration and, and it's uh, very, very interesting because um, the idea in, for this architecture is that the vector output is the similar uh, or equal to the vector input. This uh, architecture map the input in the output. Uh, it's, uh, it's a simple, but it's very, very interesting. Pay attention in the middle layer uh, called bottleneck. This bottleneck is a version, it's a short version that the vector input. So, uh, uh, in this moment, uh, the question is how I can sure that the compress that the compress uh, uh, the compress vector in the middle is the correct compress. Uh, the answer is if if I can uh, uh, reconstruct the vector in the output and the output is the similar to the input, this is a good compress in this part. And now when I when I uh, present Difference vector in the input uh, for the different classes. We have uh, uh, we have different classes, uh, but I'm not so sure uh, that class is orthogonal or, or, or there are orthogonal uh, classes. Uh, and I I have a problem because I can sure that this uh, um, produce orthogonal vectors. For this idea. Uh, in the equation one, we can have um, the distant Euclidians. Check. Um, the Q out may, uh, minus Q in, the difference is similar to zero. In, in the Euclidean distance, this, is, this part is no, but in the equation two, uh, is the similar the equation one is the similar with with equation two because the equation two represent not one vector uh, uh, represent multiple vectors but uh, and again I'm not so sure I'm not so sure uh, that the orthogonality in, in interclasses yeah for this for this part, uh, uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, I add this second part in the equation two. This this add this part uh, uh, is interesting because check the vector R H. If I multiply the vector R uh, by vector R transpose. And this result, I subtract the identity, uh, the identity matrix. 
we can show in this part the orthogonality between vectors. And this equation is um, more complete because this part uh, uh, for me is 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 a is a good part because this part uh, I can be I can be sure that the orthogonality process is developed. But what happened uh, what happened with the orthogonality vector? Uh, in this in this case, I can uh, I can eliminate this part and becomes in a new uh, architecture. Uh, in this architecture, uh, we can see that all we need the vector input and the middle and the middle uh, bottleneck. Uh, and this equation now is my objective equation or my my fitness solution because this equation if i solve this equation i found the orthogonality vector between uh, between classes but uh, this part is a short version and now this becomes in a uh, in a optimization problem for the optimization problem we propose the ABC algorithms. The ABC algorithm uh, 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 is an bio-inspired algorithm. Uh, we have three uh, in ABC algorithm. We have three uh, three, three kinds of bits. Uh, one bit uh, uh, is called employee bits. The employee bits uh, is a one solution. Is a one solution. Oh, sorry. Is a one solution for this part because I need the matrix, the synaptic matrix, uh, uh, that correct, that solve this equation. In these algorithms, one this is one solution, but I need to check the quality of the solution. For uh, uh, comparing the quality solution. In the ABC algorithm, the quality solution is similar to food solution or, or, or food sources. Good solution, good forces. Uh, 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 we have the unlooked bits and, and, and this uh, this piece, the task for the this piece, uh, this piece is check the quality of the food source. And finally, the scout piece is another kind of bits, and these bits propose new solution. Yeah. Uh, in this part, uh, I check the pseudo code uh, for these algorithms, but but it's important to check uh, in this part uh, the scale bits because uh, the equation four is the initialization of one bit. Equation four is a one solution for me, uh, for, for the system, is the one matrix, the synaptic matrix. And if you, for example, if you have 10 bits, uh, 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 will, uh, if you have 10 bits, we consider 10 solutions. But the 10 solution, not all the solution is a good solution. I need to, to, to perform the equation five. The equation five uh, give me the information that what is the best solution in this in, in this moment. For 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 check uh, for 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 this presentation, uh, this equation. We propose they use the the famous MNIST database. In the data in the MNIST database uh, consists uh, in hardware number uh, um, and hardware uh, and, and, and one number uh, have the dimension the 24 rows for 24 columns. This matrix becomes in a vector. 
and this vector is present in this architecture, in this new architecture. Uh, this architecture uh, uh, run the AEC algorithm. And the solution is for this. We can see uh, the good separability between classes. Yeah. And it's very, very simple because this part is a short, um, it's a short architecture. And the and the and the solution for the equation, the solution, the orthogonality solution is very, very simple. Uh, in table one, uh, we propose the use um, one, two, three, four, five, six um, data set. The first data set represents the number zero, one, and two, and, and this is a subdivision of the MLE database. The similar manner, the second uh, the second data data set. Uh, constitute the number three, four, or five. Um, the another uh, subdivision is for the uh, number six and nine. The next one is the seven and eight number. And the five data set uh, pro, uh, we prove with all numbers. And the uh, and the the six data set. Uh, propose a Kropman data set. The Kropman data set is important because the, the this data set this data set is not exactly one image. Uh, in the in the Kropman data set is a um, is a collection of image. It's a, um, a spectral images. One image represents a, a uh, the infrared uh, long wave and the other images represent um, the, the normal spectra or, or, or the um, um, uh, we represent another spectra in the long wave. Uh, we have seven classes for this for this uh, uh, database. And the, and the parameters for the ABC algorithm for all data set, the database, I propose this parameter of the ABC algorithm. Uh, in this case, propose 100 uh, bits, uh, 50 foot uh, souls. Uh, uh, but it's important to check this part. We propose three neurons in the output. One neuron is for three uh, uh, one uh, the, the new one is for dimension one the second neuron is for dimension two and the third neuron is for dimension three uh, in the table three uh, uh, we presented the performance of the abc algorithm um, for the for the field uh, data set the number Zero, one, and two. We waste the time the nine point one hundred sixty-eight minute and and achieve uh, uh, a a value of the zero point zero zero two twenty-five. And the error, uh, uh, we can see that the error is very very small. Yeah. Uh, the characteristic of the computer. That, that use for this uh, for this project uh, is is the um, is is this I, I use uh, a computer with core core i7 the first generation um, run with eight giga gigabytes operating system Windows 8.1 uh, with uh, 64 bits. And program this part in MATLAB and in MATLAB uh, 2019 uh, B. Uh, this is is important. This part is important because remember, dimension one is the output in the first uh, neuron. Dimension two 
is the output for the uh, for the neuron two, and the dimension three is the output for the um, for the neuron three. We can see a good separability between classes. Yeah, this uh, this part is for the group zero, one, and two. In 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 this part, uh, and again, dimension one, dimension two, and dimension three. Uh, uh, present the, the the output for the neuron one, for the neuron two, and the neuron three. And again, is is um, is important uh, to 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 check the, the good separability between classes because it's very very simple. The the, the formula is very very simple. The process is very, very simple and, and surprise. The, separ the separability between classes is very, 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 very good. Uh, the last one is for the cropland database. Mm -hmm. We can see the good separability, but um, this graph is a static graph. Uh, but imagine if if can move this graph, uh, it's not possible now because because this graph is a static graph. But um, believe me, me <laughs> that this graph is is um, present a good separability uh, between classes. Yeah. And and some conclusions uh, uh, for for this work. Uh, is the use of ABC algorithms to replace the optimization method in machine learning is possible. Typically, a, a, a common method, method is the um, gradient descent, but the ABC algorithm is an, a, a, a new proposed the solution for, uh, for this task. Uh, the minimal architecture for a color type network with this attractive for the hardware implementation because it's, it's, a, it's a little it's a little uh, um, architecture and and it's possible to implement it in, in, in a FPGA yeah uh, this consume uh, a low uh, sources uh, the linear transfer function for the neuron maybe uh, 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 can reduce uh, the, re the relation complexity. The underlying potential of the meta heuristic for training is, um, is proposed and, and, and the, the, the results uh, demonstrate that this proposed is, is possible and, and, and underlying potential of the meta heuristic for training is uh, I would propose that use in another uh, architecture of the neurons. Yeah. Um, they use the original orthogonalization term in the original our encoder, a uh, model and objective function uh, for the ABC algorithm is possible. Uh, it's possible to apply the ABC algorithm for solution for the different uh, architecture of the neural architecture. Uh, here presents some reference that, that use in this presentation and, and, and thank you for, for all and, and, and now any question? Thank you. Uh, I have uh, maybe a couple of questions. Uh, but, uh, the next one is uh, you talked about uh, orthogonality. Maybe yeah. this is uh, a feature that the net must have in order to have to results. Is, is this correct? Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Um, For, for this case, for this case, um, 
when, when testing the, 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 this architecture, uh, we prove uh, with number zero, with number one, with number two, and, and, and at the beginning, uh, the results, um, I don't know, present a, a, a mix, um, a, presents a, 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 a mix, a mix graph. But when apply the orthogonalization process, uh, it's, a, it's a good surprise because when I apply the, the orthogonality, uh, 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 this this architecture can separate uh, the vectors, but it's very very important. Uh, we uh, we can uh, we 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 have one result um, with orthogonality uh, reduction and maybe a bad solution. Uh, uh, I need uh, to 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 prove with another uh, with another example because this is a uh, this is a, a, a data set um, a poor data set. I need more more vectors. Yeah, but in uh, uh, but now for 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 this class presents a good solution, a very good solution. So not always there is present the orthogonality. Yeah. So you can, you must force this orthogonality. Yes. Okay. Yes, I accept. Results. I accept this part. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, can I make another question? Uh, besides you uh, talked about the quality of the uh, results. Yes. So my question is, how can you validate of the, that quality? Uh, okay. Um, for this work, for this work, I check the the uh, mean square error. Uh, for for uh, this uh, this value is exactly the mean score error, and, and, and I check the, the, the mean score error between the output with the input, and and for me is a uh, no, no for me for for, for, for this work is is a good value, but I accept uh, we only have two zeros after the point. Is there any other question from the audience on the internet? Uh, yeah. okay. uh, I would like to know if the ABC algorithm uh, employs differential information or is a purely by an inspired algorithm? Mm -hmm. this, this is a good question. Uh, um, the by inspired algorithms, uh, in this case, ABC algorithms. Is is simple. It's very it's very very simple. Uh, the code um, not present uh, 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 mathematical uh, complicated mathematical, and the result is, is, is very good uh, uh, because uh, you need uh, a little. A little iteration, yeah. In in in, in this case, five thousand uh, iteration is not is not uh, it's not a big number. It's a, a, a it's a short number. Uh, uh, for this case, ABC algorithms uh, uh, the results is very very quick. Uh, this is the the the, the principal. Uh, Characteristic for this for this algorithm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We step uh, here for the next presentation, and we appreciate.
for your contribution in this conference. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Continue with a second presentation by uh, student Ivan Chong. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the presentation of the paper called Air Conduction Mass Processing Using PC Logic from the authors Ivan Chong, Alvaro Anzueto, uh, Jose Moreno, Mario Reyes, and Luis Lores. My name is Ivan Chong and I'm very pleased, I'm very pleased to be with you and I will be the speaker of this presentation. The content is organized as follows. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction talking about retinography, digital image, and image processing. Then, I will explain the method we developed to make our contrast enhancement. Next, I will, sh I will show some results, and finally, the conclusion. Well, uh, retinography are digital photographies of the are digital photographies taken from the back of the eye. And these photographies allow us to observe and analyze the inner tissue of the eye, including its main areas, such as the fovea, the macula, and the optic nerve, mainly. But it also allows us to observe the blood vessel distributions. And with this analysis, uh, specialist physicians can generate a diagnosis, where the most common pathologies are the diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma. For diabetic retinopathy, the main things that can be observed in this image are hemorrhages, microaneurysms, the exudates, and, uh, and the neovascularization. On the other side, for glaucoma, the main things appear in the optic nerve. And these things are the abnormal physiognomy of this optic nerve, the abnormal emergency in, of the blood vessels, and the non-proportional distance between the optic disc and the optic cup, but also in glaucoma we have the neovascularization. Well, as I said in the third slide, uh, the retinography are digital photographies, so they are digital image. And digital image are two-dimensional representation of numerical matrices, where each cell is known as a pixel, and a pixel is formed by numerical data and its configuration depends entirely on the color space used. Usually, the RGB color space is the most common color space used in image, and it's the base of all image, and it represents the color by three channels, the red, the green, and the blue. Uh, due to the difficulty in taking uh, digital photographs uh, in medical image, their most common problem is the low quality. However, an image processing is a solution for that. The main objective of the, of the image processing is to improve the picture quality, adjusting either the lighting, the focus, or the contrast. In this work, we develop a system that makes a contrast enhancement that, as I said before, is a type of image processing where the dynamic range of the distribution of pixel is increased. In this figure, we can see the, this dynamic range in the, in the shape of these graphs. Well, the developed process uh, was based on physical logic, and the physical logic is just a way to model logical reasoning where the truth of a statement is not binary. Instead, it has a degree of truth. And to use fusion logic allows us to design fusion inference systems, which are functions that map a set of inputs to outputs using uh, human interpretable rules. 
And to use these this kind of rules allows the system to adapt to the requirements. For this case, to the color modeling requirements. This flow diagram shows the methodology we use to make our contrast enhancement. And as you can see in the first part, we make a color space conversion from the RGB color space to the CLR. This color space also represents the color with three channels, but the first one, uh, the L channel, contains all the information of the luminosity of the image. So we took this channel and worked on it, only on it. Uh, for the contrast enhancement, we use two fusing inference systems. The former just the former just evaluates the contrast quality of the original image. And in, the, in its input, we have the standard deviation. And in the output, we have the X parameter. This parameter uh, is taken by the second phase to, and, and this, well, this parameter just will, will, make, will make the other phase to make a lot improvement, uh, just a little improvement or not a lot improvement. Uh, well, in the input, the input of the second phase, uh, in the input of the second phase, we have the original, the original pixel, and in the output, the new value this pixel will have, uh, and this process is made pixel by pixel. So at the end of the of, of all the process, we'll, we will have a new L channel which will be bonding with the other two channels to make another color space conversion, now from the CLF to RGB color space. Well, as I said in the past slide, uh, in, the input of the, in the input of the first phase, we have the standard deviation uh, that in, in, in digital image, the standard deviation is known as root mean square contrast. Uh, 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 and the standard deviation indicates how, how dispersed our pixels values are in relation to the mean. So it's an indicator for the contrast of the image. Here we have uh, its, its equation. And for this piece, this, this graphics shows the, member, the, the input membership function, functions of this piece. And we have a low, low standard deviation, medium standard deviation, and high standard deviation. For the for the, the fusification, we use three if then rules, which are here, where f11, f12, and f13 are the output singleton values. For the fusification, we use the weighted average method or one method. And here is the equation we use, and the transfer curve for this equation is here. For the second piece, we use seven if then rules. In short, this rule make the dark pixels darker or the light pixels lighter in order to make the contrast enhancement. The, the output singleton values are, are shown here in this, in this table. And, and as you can see in the second in the second, in the second, well, here and here, we have the X parameter, which was the output of the first list. Uh, this graphics shows the, the input membership functions, and this, the, the output, uh, using the, the, the one method for the classification. And also, this is the, the, the equation. Well, uh, as a result, we, the method we developed, we applied in 45 uh, images taken from the FAO database. This database contains uh, 15, 15 diabetic retinopathy image, images, uh, 15 with glaucoma and 15 healthy. And in order to have to evaluate our method, we compare it with two, two basic um, algorithms algorithm for, for image processing, uh, for contrast enhancement image processing. 
And these two algorithms are histogram equalization and the histogram equalization. As you can see in this in this in this slide, we have the original, the and the and the three methods to make the contrast enhancement. As you can see, the histogram and the histogram equalization has very bright parts in the image. And we can observe this with the graph, with these graphs, where the shape of the graph with in histogram and the histogram equalization are larger than the original and the PC method. But uh, it's important to see that they have very bright parts and images. For glaucoma, it's the same case. For image with glaucoma, it's the same case. We have very bright parts of the image with histogram and with histogram equalization. But our method just improve the improve the contrast without uh, without make uh, brighter parts in the in images. And here are the the histograms. And for health, for healthy images, we have the same case. Well. Uh, do we are dealing with medical images? We have to be careful, and an opinion of a specialist physician is very important because, uh, in, in our in our perspective, we can say that histogram and the histogram equalization ha have a higher, uh, better results than our method. However, uh, the, opi the medical opinion said that that very bright parts on images may represent uh, non-existent pathologies. So we have to be very careful with that. And in order to have uh, an objective comparison, we use to we use two parameters to evaluate our system. The first is the MCI or measurement of contrast index. That is just an index that that tells us if if the processed image has a better or or lower contrast than the original image. On the other side, uh, the PSNR is the peak signal to noise radio, and this indicates the the quality of the process. It takes the original image as signal and the noise image as, as and the sorry and the processed image as the, as the noise. And well, do it indicate the quality of the process in the, the results? In this graph, show the results and shows that our method, the FIS method, has a higher quality than the other two methods. And the, um, for the MC, MCI, yeah. this shows that the histogram and big histogram equalization prove that they have a higher contrast than our methods. Well, uh, these images were all, all the processed images were presented to medical to medical opinion. And in general, they said that the original image were good. However, the, fused, the processed image with our method was very good because it improves the contrast Without uh, without having the brighter parts on images, and in their opinion, the histogram and the histogram equalization, there are no suitable for this kind of image. Do it as the, the the brighter parts of the images. Um, as a conclusion, we have that in medical image, very high values of MCI led in the loss of information in areas of interest, as 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 we can see for glaucoma, the the, opti the optic nerve is um is practically brighter, is practically practically white, and we can see the details in this part. With our method, is we don't have this case. It improves the contrast. But we still can see the all, all the physiognomy of this part. And well, uh, another conclusion is that the PC is that our method proved to be superior against the traditional methods 
based on histogram modification that are histogram correlation and the histogram correlation, the, the, we, we said that it's superior because of the opinion, opinion of the medical, of, of medics, sorry, and because they are consistent with the PSNR values that, well, in these graphs, is shown that our method has a better quality than the other two methods. And well, that's all for my part. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, you can ask me or send me an email. Yes. Is there any question? Thanks everyone for the presentation. Can you go to slide 11? For you, for Sentinel, uh, sorry, slide five. I'm taking the numbers of all. I'm worried. Okay. Uh, you presented for something uh, three approaches for this analysis. How can you mention about the problems that, are, that may be present with the lagging adjustment and focus adjustment compared to the contrast in case? Well, it depends entirely on the quality of the image. Usually, an image, a uh, low quality of image may be, may be because it's very dark because it has not an adequate focus but it has a low contrast uh, a contrast enhancement it's a it's a solution for for low contrast and for the for the low focus because it makes that the part that can be seen uh, in the naked eye uh, the contrast enhancement makes that that, that the, this part results. And for that, contrast enhancement is a solution for the focus and the low contrast. On the, for lighting, it's, um, well, it's really, the contrast enhancement re really don't, is not suitable for, for make an enhancement for lighting. So we have we have to develop another 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 system to improve the light the lighting and also in the as a future work we well uh, right now we are developing a new method that improves also lighting well first improve we have we want to improve the lighting and then the contrast enhancement for in order to to improve the, the image um, completely. Complete. So you are going to have two stages? Yes, the first one uh, has to evaluate the luminosity and with this, with this analysis we will improve the lighting and with the image with lighting adjustment we make this contrast enhancement. We are developing this system right now and it seems to be to be very good. Thank it you. seems to have very good results. So from the audience in internet, is there any question? So if not, yes, we appreciate uh, Ivan for the contribution. I don't know what to say. We stop here or I still wait for. Hello, Professor and Next is. Okay, okay, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were around. Yeah, we present our paper. I will share my screen.
you are the um, ID one or six or or twelve. Which one? Sir, oh, sir. You are uh, representative for estimation and detection. Yeah. Yeah. You are presenting estimation and detection. Yeah, I will present the estimation and detection. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, so you're identified. Yes. Are you ready for the presentation? Yeah, I'm ready for this. I'm ready. Oh. Okay. Uh, could you see my screen? I didn't know. Maybe you. I I cannot see your presentation still. Yeah, but now uh, you see my screen. You see my, you see my presentation. But it is not shared. Okay, let me share again. Um, okay, maybe now. No, this is not. Okay, let me see. I don't know what is the problem because okay. I'm using. The... Okay. Now you see my screen? No, we cannot see. Okay, I don't know what is the problem. Maybe someone from the technical team in the room? Maybe we could see. I don't know Let what is the problem. Let me ask the technicians if they have a solution. The sets. Uh, Right here is uh, RK, but uh, I don't know. You use. No. Yes. Okay, we we can we can see your presentation right now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, okay. I will start now. Okay. Okay. My, uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Maximiliano Bueno Lopez. I'm professor from the Department of Electronics, Instrumentation and Control in Universidad del Cauca in, in Colombia. Uh, our paper is a collaborative work um, with some colleagues from the Universidad Autónoma Metropolitana in, uh, in Mexico City. And the title of our paper is Estimation and Detection of Oscillations in Electrical Power Systems. Uh, basically, this is the layout of the presentation. I will start with a brief introduction about the goals for our research. And I will advance with some results and, and conclusions. Okay, the, the basic idea of our paper and our strategy is try, is try to show the difference between Fourier and wavelength transfer with the HHT or Hilbert one transfer that is composed basically uh, by the empirical mode decomposition. Our idea is try to show the advantage and disadvantage of the different methods. For example, um, when I try to use or when I try to detect an specific frequencies, in one special kind of signals, for example, periodic signal and uh, non-time invariant signals, it's possible to use uh, Fourier. But when I use in non-linear and non-stationary signals, maybe it's better uh, to use uh, one method like empirical mode decomposition. Um, Maybe it's common uh, for you, the use of Fourier transfer, when I try to analyze, for example, a, a sinusoidal signals, when I know the period of the signal, it's possible to use these kind of methods. 
but with the signal that appears in the mother power systems, that is something like this. That is a typical uh, way for for a for a signal the mother power uh, systems. Maybe it's better just to use another uh, strategies. Mm, we we started analyzing um, signals from EEG. Um, um, from from electroencephalographic signals, we started with this kind of signals, and then um, we uh, we note that it's possible to use this method in um, signals from mother power systems. So we started with uh, biomedical signals, and then we moved to this kind of systems. And now we we can use the method in different process. Now we can use this method in different process. And this is the basic idea um, uh, for Hilbert one transfer. Hilbert one transfer is one contribution um, from Professor Norden Juan, and Professor Norden Juan uh, took the basic Hilbert transfer. And he notes some uh, behaviors in the signals uh, when uh, he applied Hilbert transfer. And the problem with, with Hilbert transfer is that we need a, a specific period of time, or we need to know a specific period of time of the signal with some basic information. Basically, the Hilbert fan transfer. Uh, has two important parts, the empirical mode decomposition and the Hilbert transfer. And uh, the Hilbert uh, transfer uh, can be told as, of, as the convolution of Xt with the function Ht. It's a basic and normal uh, convolution uh, operation. And with the Hilbert transfer, it's possible uh, to discover the magnitude and the phase of the signal. And then with this information, we can calculate the instantaneous frequency of one signal. The main contribution of the Hilbert one transfer is the possibility to calculate the instantaneous frequency of a signal. And this is a really good contribution because in the mother power systems, it's possible to see change in the frequency of the signal. It's not that some years ago, when possibly we don't we don't have solar generation, uh, wind generation, when the primary resource was constant. Now we need to think about the radiation, the velocity of the, of the wind. Now we need to think that it's possible that the frequency is continue changing. And for this reason, the instantaneous frequency is um, a useful parameter that now we can calculate in the in the mother power systems. Uh, the idea with the empirical mode decomposition is that we need to um, calculate the intrinsic mode functions. The intrinsic mode functions are the components or, or different from different frequencies that maybe we can see in the systems. For example, if I have a normal frequency for 60 Hertz, that is the common frequency in our power systems, but it's possible to detect uh, close frequencies, for example, uh, 62 hertz or 58 hertz, and maybe I need to, to, to identify the time when occur these uh, perturbations that produce these frequencies. Uh, so with the instantaneous frequency, I can check or I can discover the exactly moment when these frequencies appear. So this is a, a, a good contribution with the method. This is a, a basic algorithm uh, for the from the empirical mode decomposition to calculate the IMF is basically an iterative process when I need to uh, extract a basic component or a main component from the from the signal, and after this I can discover and I can calculate. The other components from the from the from the signal. Uh, when when we compare the FFT, the Wigner bill uh, distribution, the wavelength transfer, and the Hilbert one transfer, um, we can conclude that with nonlinear signals or nonlinear systems systems, the HHT and the Wigner bill distribution. Uh, have good results. With non-stationary signals, 
um, uh, we can see a uh, good behavior from the wavelength transfer and the HHD. And when, the, when we need future extraction with this kind of, of goal, when, when our goal is future extraction, the best method is HHD because it's the best method when the application is this kind of signals to try to, to, to see different uh, frequencies, but when the frequencies are close. When I, when I say before, when we have, for example, 60 hertz, 62 hertz, 58 hertz, it's difficult to try, to try to discover these frequencies, for example, with fast Fourier transfer. But with HHT, it's possible to discover these closed tones or these closed uh, frequencies. Um, again, we have here the, the, the basic idea with empirical mode decomposition that basically is identified locally, the, the, the fastest oscillation. And after uh, identifying this fastest oscillation, subtract to the signal and iterate on the residual. It's a data driving method that is locally adapting a multi scale. And this is other uh, good component no? that is possible uh, locally adapting. For, uh, to the to the map, okay. Um, in this paper, we use a synthetic a synthetic signal that you can see that the signal has different frequency components and finally has a noise component. Now we are using real signals, okay, real signals from the smart meters that we are using in our labs in Mexico and, and in Colombia. But for the paper, the, the signal that we use uh, was a synthetic signal. Uh, and the, the, the goal is try to discover these frequencies that you can see here, no? Uh, 60 hertz, 180 hertz, 360 hertz, and 690 hertz. First, we apply the method to the original signal. This is the original signal. This is a typical behavior from a modern power system. Now, uh, you can see here, this has, uh, these are the intrinsic mode functions. You can see different frequencies in each intrinsic mode function, and this is the goal of the method. It separates the frequencies in different components. Now, if you are interested, for example, only in the fundamental component, you can check what uh, you can check what is the what is the um, uh, in which it, uh, in which IMF appears the fundamental frequency. No, for example, if in this case we have in the in this uh, second IMF the 60 hertz component, we can focus our analysis only in this component. If we are interested in other frequencies we focus only our attention in this um, in this component no and this is a a, a a great advantage of the method no because we don't need to consider for example noise or for example uh, another uh, frequencies that are produced maybe uh, for power quality problems or or something like this um, we are using um, a microgrid for, for our test. It's a low voltage distribution system that is basically composed uh, by five homes. Uh, in each home, we have smart meters. And um, uh, we, um, we are checking the, the power in the, in the system, no? The P and Q, see? Uh, we are checking the, the, this power in the system. We are measuring this power in the in the system and it's interesting because normally we have the active power but we when we are or when we analyze the reactive power uh, we have an, an, an interesting uh, behaviors that are not common to analyze with for example Fourier um, Fourier transform and here we can see a, a normal signal that uh, it's possible to to obtain for for our systems. Uh, these data correspond to a volta for electrical system taken at a sampling frequency that uh, that appear here uh, for this period of time. Okay, we uh, took only a uh, hundred uh, milliseconds. Uh, for, for trying to show the, the effect of the method. Here we can see the instantaneous frequency. 
you can see, for example, here, a uh, frequency close to 700 hertz. Now we can see here a component that is close to 200 hertz, and it's possible to identify the variation of the frequency versus uh, time. No, and this is the, the the idea to use the method, and only try to focus our attention in the component of our uh, interest. No, that I, I insist that, for example, if in the in this case we are only interested in this component that is 60 hertz. Um, we can use only this IMF. We can use uh, we can use only this instantaneous frequency. We don't need the the rest of the information. And obviously, this is a great advantage um, when we're thinking in the computational time and the volume of data that normally we have in this kind of, of process. Here is the the instantaneous the intrinsic mode function again. No? Now we we can see. What is the decomposition from this signal? We have here five IMFs, and again, we can uh, try to analyze only our uh, component of interest. You can see here, for example, only one kind of variation in this signal, that this is the signal for 60 hertz. Now we can see here that we have different frequencies in this kind of signal. No? The main goal of the main idea is try try to get something like this, no? Something when it's possible to recognize only what kind of frequency. And this is the, 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 the main goal for, for this uh, process. And another thing that it's possible to, to see here is that in the first IMFs, normally we have the noise component. You can see here that is a, this, uh, this an, uh, a noise component that normally these frequencies uh, are, are high frequencies. And normally the high frequencies, or always the high frequencies, appears in the first IMS. And this is our, our case here. No? And in this case, we can uh, use or we can reconstruct the signal only, only uh, using only the IMF without noise, for example. In this case, IMF2, uh, sorry, this is IMF3, uh, it's possible to use only these two IMFs and don't use this because uh, this IMF um, contains only noise um, components. This is the behavior for the instantaneous frequency. You can see that sometimes it's difficult try to try to have something like this when it's possible to see only one kind of frequency. And the reason is because the original signal uh, has different frequencies and it's and it's really difficult when the frequencies are are close. And this is the 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 main goal for, for another for the main goal for the for for the method okay so finally um, 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 as conclusions of this paper that is that implementation of the standard END and a variation of the END that we use that is the END with the mass signal uh, show excellent results when we are trying to uh, extract close frequencies from one process that in that case is a is a power system it's a power system uh, and it's possible to reduce the number of imfs or the number of decomposition bands uh, applying the method with the mass signal and um, always uh, it's possible to to improve the method now we we are use for example the multivariate empirical mode decomposition when it's possible to 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 work with multivariate systems no and it's possible to to use uh, another uh, combinations of the methods for example it's possible to use the empirical mode decomposition with Fourier transfer after the decomposition of the uh, of the IMFs, it's possible to apply Fourier to detect the the, the frequencies in in these in these signals, and the the results of things which are presented in this paper give the beginning to a new strategy for the choice of the mass signals. And for example, something that I, I want to add to, uh, to finish, that is we are using the method, for example, in the, in the analysis of superharmonics, 
that um, we we get from the from the smart meters, and it's possible to analyze the superharmonics in, in in what signal that normally with the with the common methods or with the classical methods, uh, it's difficult. And, the common, and, and within the computational time, is it's, it's really hard for a common computer. No, so it's, it's necessary to think about one method that that um, avoid to use uh, information that really we don't need for for our conclusion. No, um, however. Okay, and the method it's not is not perfect. Obviously, the, the Hilbert one transfer presents difficulties in mixing modes and edge effect. And basically, the big problem for the methods is the mixing modes. That is the case when we can see uh, different uh, frequency components in the same IMF. Something like this. No, for example, here we can see different frequency components in the same IMF. I've the goal is try to have something like this in this IMF in IMF four. It's only to have one frequency component in each IMF. This is the goal for the method, and, and we are working in this for to try to 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 improve our algorithm and try to to prove the the algorithm in in different systems. Okay, uh, this is all for 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 me. Uh, thank you for your attention, and um, I wait for your questions. Okay. Thank you, uh, Maximiliano, for your presentation. I ask uh, if there are some questions in the room or from abroad. Seems to me. Okay, uh, we have one question. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how complex numerically is this algorithm in order to know if it's suitable for small devices, processor like microcontrollers or FPGAs? Okay. Yeah, you can you can uh, use. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. We, for example, in this in this moment. We are we are using a uh, Raspberry Pi, for example, for the processing. Uh, we have used uh, microcontrollers also, and finally we are using a supercomputer that we have in, in our lab in Colombia for process the process information. No, but at the beginning we only use a computer. We map that. We start to map that, and then we move. To Python process, but I think that it's possible to use a, a computer and a microcontroller. It's enough for this case. It's okay. okay. Another question, still? No. So we appreciate very much, Maximiliano, for your presentation. Thanks very much. Presentation uh, is, the, uh, is there a presenter? No? Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize that. You are Jorge Vila. Yes. 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 Hello. You, uh, can you see my presentation? Okay, we can we can see your presentation right now. So, okay, you want to start, please? Okay. So, shall I start? Um, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. We are okay, ready. thank you. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for allowing me to, to do the presentation. Originally, my paper was presented in uh, this session, the communications, but uh, we got some problems in, 
in the internet. Uh, internet was gone. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I would like to present my paper. It's uh, capacity recoupled. It's entitled Capacity Recoupled Bandpass Filter Using Defective Ground Structure Featuring a Shield Covering Control. Um, these, uh, the co-authors of this work are um, Dr. Isal uh, Galvan. Uh, he is uh, with Simvestab and Dr. Ramon um, um, Ramon Rodriguez. He is in um, University of Autónoma in Nuevo León. Um, the presentation is as follows. Uh, first, I will give an introduction of, of this work. Then I will show um, novel uh, defective ground structure, which allows me to, to, to build uh, uh, a distributed circuit distributed filter in order to, to, to achieve a band, bandpass filter, filtering. And then I will show the circuit model equivalence of, of this structure. Then I will show electromagnetic performance of the unit cell. And then I will move to, to show some details of, on the planar triple bandpass filter at 10 gigahertz. And then I will give uh, conclusions. Um, <clears throat> Well, um, there have been a significant research uh, devoted to the realization of uh, band gap structures that uh, is uh, bring the, um, the band gap effects, uh, which originally was proposed in the optical domain, to bring to the microwave frequencies. Um, and this um, in research is uh, in order to is, is intended to enhance the band pass um, and near to zero rejection all uh, when compared, for instance, with other um, technologies such as a surface mount technology. Um, the first band gap structure based on the effects uh, etched in the in the ground plan structure was proposed by Anne in 2001. Um, so when applied to filter design, the notch uh, 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 or zero uh, transfer function can be placed anywhere, uh, but depends on the uh, capacity gap that shows G in, in, the, in the structure is G, and uh, two apertures that are used to air current to set the, the equivalent frequency or the equivalent uh, inductance as well. So several slot heads have been uh, proposed by H, by etching single or multiple um, defects in the line of the microstrip. Uh, for instance, uh, the DMS uh, proposed by Tirado in 2004 has, um, as shown in the in the figure, has a narrow slot in the middle of the line. Uh, this DMS structure um, was proposed in order to complement um, um, uh, the performance of DGS, which has itself some uh, limitations, such as uh, inadequate inadequacy in the equivalent uh, capacitance. Um, the, uh, this figure shows um, and, and, um, the limitations, the, the frequency response, uh, uh, which was reported in an early a paper by, by Ann, and it's seen that the rejection band is limited at higher frequencies, as you can see, um, and this is because uh, higher order resonances and radiation effects, um, which appears uh, above the resonant frequency. Um, the addition of two DMS, as shown in the in, in this um, the structure, we can see defected microstrip structures at the input and output. So um, in order to alternate, in order to alternate uh, resonances at specific frequencies. Um, a, an important drawback of DGS is the need of suspending, uh, suspending the microstrip line as shown there uh, to avoid any unwanted interactions, uh, unwanted electromagnetic interference below the, the defected ground plane so uh, for design, the DGS unit cells must be surrounded by absorption, absor um, absorption conditions as shown in the figure. Uh, this is uh, a boundary box in CST uh, that is required in order to, 
to, to um, simulate and design the structure. And for testing, the analyzer uh, must be, uh, should be connected through metal, um, metal section as shown there uh, for grounding and avoiding uh, covering the apertures, uh, which actually are required in order to, to provide a, 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 a necessary um, 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 radiation. Um, however, the, more, the most important uh, drawback of the DGS um, unit cells is uh, his large radiation. Um, these figures allow contrasting uh, radiation of the common microstrip line uh, uh, and the DMS structure. And we can see that uh, this structure behaves as a radiator as um, the wavelength is reduced. Um, um, uh, and uh, the radiation becomes uh, more um, important. <clears throat> so, um, uh, the one pass field um, reported in this work uh, is based on the novel DGS units that includes DMS behavior, as shown in, in this photograph. Um, um, the modification was proposed by the author. Uh, the unit cell is implemented by etching. Uh, L-shaped slots, as shown in the photographs, and the strip uh, has no defects. Uh, Some uh, will include the DMS uh, behavior, the, the um, um, uh, defected microstrip behavior is included in the ground plane. So the foundation of the uh, improved performance uh, we can see in this figure when we compare um, uh, fields um, in the ground plane at 10 gigahertz, uh, at this uh, frequency much higher than the uh, self-resonant frequency of each structure. Um, and the DMS shows um, 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 a large, a lower, lower magnetic uh, uh, current. Uh, this means that we are controlling the the current that are um, flowing around the apertures. On the other hand, um, um, we, we can see that DMS have a very large uh, uh, current in the ground plane. So that implies that we have more, uh, res, um, more um, um, radiation in, in, the, in the structure. Uh, which is uh, undecided uh, in the in the frequency response. Um, in addition, we can see that electric field tra trapped in the DGS, DGS slot is about five times higher than the field of the, in the DM, DGS. Um, therefore, uh, we can conclude from this that uh, the DMS uh, DGS L slot improves the capacitance. So uh, the increased uh, capacitance allows for reducing the area of the apertures, um, about 40% less area, which also is a contributing factor in the uh, effective radiation. Um, we found that the selection of the proper parameters, as shown in this um, in this detail, in these uh, dimensions of the of the structure. Um, uh, provides um, lower radiation, as we can see the DMS uh, in red in, in the red uh, uh, line is much lower than the DGS uh, in, in in blue at higher frequencies above 10 gigahertz, which allows to uh, provide new functionalities for these structures. Um, a circuit equivalence, um, well. We need to, to to model radiation loss because it's an important characteristic of these structures. Um, this, the figure shows as parameters of the two unit cells, the L slot and conventional DGS structures. Both, both uh, shows the same resonant frequency. Uh, however, um, we can see that the difference between both re frequency responses depends on the resistance and the radiation loss. Um, so a single pole Butterworth filter model is used to represent 
to represent uh, reactive effects. Um, the na nature of the susceptibility def defines clearly the dominant inductive uh, region for frequencies below resonance and the dominant capacitive region above resonance. So uh, the circuit capacitance, um, inductance and resonance um, and the resonant frequency can be extracted uh, from this formula that shows here. And this is um, the, um, the one pole Rutherford uh, um, uh, model for, for this structure. Um, okay. Um, for the conventional DGS unit, uh, the radiation res resistance uh, is in the interval from 600 to 1.5 kilo ohms. This is for, for the conventional DGS structure. On the other hand, uh, because of the possible to possibility to um, control um, um, the uh, radiation, we can reduce more these radiation losses, and this can be uh, represented in a more uh, suitable way by this model. This uh, quarter wave transformer stop that allows to uh, provide a wider um, um, fitting in, in the frequency response. For instance, we can see here that uh, the model uh, allows a better wider curve fitting. Uh, we are comparing here um, electromagnetic response in black line and in dotted uh, blur. Um, blue line, uh, the LS with the stop, uh, the, the proposed model, and a Buddha worm. And we can see also um, in the other uh, results that we have um, the losses and the output, output flow power. We can see that uh, our model uh, fits well uh, radiation, um, um, the output flow power. Um, uh, and we can see better, better match. So the idea of this uh, uh, paper is to use the capacitive susceptance uh, in order to design filters that uh, allows to, to 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 use for the first time um, the, dom the dom dominant capacitive region in order to to design filters. Um, and this allows them to, to provide um, also a good uh, radiation effects uh, regulation. Uh, we can see that we, we can include a copper grounding wall as shown in this model, um, separated um, by a distance B uh, from the ground plane in order to, to have a better electromagnetic uh, compatibility um, in order to avoid the radiation. And uh, we can see also uh, um, results uh, from COMSOL. We can see uh, different uh, cases of studies of a study uh, in which uh, we can see that um, uh, the radiation of the LS load can be evaluated um, uh, using the peak, peak plan, a perfect electric conductor plane below the defected grounding. And um, we can see for the conventional DGS uh, structure, the blinding plane reflects large uh, scattering waves, which is um, uh, eventually a, a manifestation of the of the reflection of the scattering wave reflection on the peck plane. And uh, this allows uh, this figure allows contrasting with the LS load cell, showing lower reflections. Um, so if from the table, we can see that uh, the computation of the realized, realized gain, which is uh, the summation of the gain, maximum gain in the uh, uh, theta and, and phi uh, angles or, or planes in the, in the, in the, um, in the coordinates. Um, um, and we can see that uh, these um, realized gains of the main lobe which is uh, 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 in the case of, of, of the structure without the big plane uh, is in red. Uh, and it's similar 
uh, to the gain of the L slot with PEC, which means that um, eventually both uh, structures can radiate the same. And uh, we can then uh, include this PEC uh, perfect electric conductor plane, um, which is an important issue in, in these uh, structures, as, as mentioned before. Um, these are results of the bandpass filter uh, at 10 gigahertz, which is uh, the highest the highest frequency um, designed for this uh, type of filters. Uh, <clears throat> the capacitive coupled bandpass filter um, um, shown in, in this figure, it's separated from the, the metallic plane by three times the substrate height, and his performance is compared uh, to the half wavelength resonator based on capacitive gaps as shown there. Um, the fil um, this uh, filter um, is detailed in, in the book by Colin. Um, we can see from these parameters wider rejection uh, band at frequencies exceeding 20, 20 gigahertz. Uh, on the other hand, the filter rising on resonators shows a second harmonic frequency, and this is because uh, as a, a result of the periodicity of the planar filter, uh, since the dimensions of the reson resonator scales with frequency. Um, on the other hand, the implementation with L slot um, shows attenuation of 20 dBs at the second harmonic. So we can see an improved uh, wider uh, rejection band. So this is the conclusion of, of this presentation. Uh, we have presented results of the DESL slot unit cells uh, that enhance circuit design performance in the capacitive region, which has not been uh, proposed uh, uh, in, in literature. To the best of the author's knowledge, this work reports a bandpass filter based on defective structures with the highest cap, uh, bandpass frequency for, for these pl um, planar filters. Another important issue is uh, the capability to uh, provide some um, uh, conductor that avoid any interaction, in the side of the interaction with, um, in, the, in the lower plane. Um, and this facilitates, uh, because of the low radiation, facilities placing metal conductor at low distance. So this is an important issue for, for the design of, of such filters. Um, and we have shown that the GLSL slot becomes, the GSL slot becomes an interesting structure to improve the electromagnetic compatibility at the circuit level. Um, those are our reference uh, that I use in, for this presentation. And that's, that's all. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for your presentation. We, we ask if anyone has a question or comment. Uh -huh. So there is a question. Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Thank you. I have one question. Uh, it is well known that uh, frequency is highly dependent on capacitance. So you are working with very high frequencies like 10 gigahertz. Yes. And, uh, have you uh, any uh, made any study about the capacitance spread or variation uh, along the fabrication of your microstrips? Along what? Sorry. The fabrication of the of your micro strips. Ah, okay. Well, uh, uh, capacitance is an intrinsic property uh, for any transmission line based on 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 mic micro strip. Um, but the main idea of, of these structures is that uh, the capacitive region uh, provides um, um, a variation regarding the impedance, which allows uh, to include some uh, bandpass characteristic in the, in the filter. Uh, so the capacitive region is intrinsic in, in, in the common, in the, in the usual microstrip line. But when we include some defects in the, in the structure, we can see that uh, we can uh, 
increase the effective uh, capacitance of the structure, uh, as shown in the in this um, slide, uh, we can see uh, susceptible capacitance when we uh, have a dominant, sorry, a dominant capacitance at uh, frequency higher than resonance. So uh, this capacitance allows to construct this this. Um, well, uh, this is a demonstration of, of the capacitive characteristic intrinsic to this uh, structure. Mm -hmm. Wait, you have uh, any uh, some crystal variations? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so, let me repeat my second question. A second okay. question. Okay. Anyway, you have some physical variations in your work. Are you there? Sorry, I, I, I don't get the, the question. Sorry, again, please. Okay. The, no, the, I talk about the, that you have some variations in your physical work. Yes. So that introduced some capacitance variation. Okay. Yes, we have. Uh, okay, the capacitance variations in this case um, is dependent on frequency. So uh, it it, mean, it means that, uh, for instance, in the in the S parameters of the bandpass filter, we can see some asymmetries in the in the roll of factor. Um, is ste ste steppy in the in in the low low frequency and the higher frequencies it's uh, has a slower slower um, uh, slower rate. Um, uh, sorry, roll of factor. The roll of factor is, is higher for uh, for the cut of higher cut of frequency, and this is because the capacitance depends on frequency. Uh, so there is not, um, I mean, there is there is not uh, just a capacitive uh, value for any frequency, but there is some uh, variation around the cutoff frequency or the central frequency of the filter in which uh, we can see this this variation of of, of of the capacitance. That's that's why I can I can increase this um, uh, slow. Oh, oh sorry. Um, um, uh, factor uh, is um, filter factor uh, uh, slow factor um, in order to to have a more um, um, uh, sy symmetric response. Perhaps this this is uh, this can help to 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 answer your question. Hey, thank you. Okay, we appreciate very much for your presentation, Jorge. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So this ends the session. Yes. I am thirsty. <laughs>